I found out my girlfriend of three years cheated on me. She's coming home to an empty apartment today and a note. I found out when she was at work on Monday, I work from home, and her iPad kept making notification sounds. I went to turn it off, and when I opened it, I saw all the Facebook notifications from some dude, and they were definitely flirtatious and sexual, so I read through them. I couldn't believe it. She was 100% cheating on me with this guy for several months now. All those late nights at work or outings with girlfriends must have been with this dude. I didn't even know we were having problems or that she wasn't happy. I had even bought a ring and was planning to propose. I was crushed and still am. I can't reconcile it. I went to the jewelry store, returned the ring, and made arrangements to take today off work. She's the primary on the lease, so I'm just moving into a buddy's house. I rented a U-Haul, and I'm loading everything I own in there and leaving. I also took some of the furniture we bought together, like our couches and our new TV. I have the receipts and they were bought with my card, however she did give me half of the money. Is that fair? No, but neither is being cheated on, so I think this balances it out a bit, and I don't feel particularly bad about taking the more expensive electronics and furniture we bought together, given the circumstances. Also, I figure her new boyfriend can help her refurnish the apartment. I wrote her a note telling her I found out about all of her meetups with this other guy and that I'm not coming back. It legitimately bothers me how easy it is for her to do this level of betrayal and be a good enough actress that I genuinely never suspected anything. I legitimately can't ever trust her again. Update. I've heard from a few people that my ex is an absolute basket case right now and going nuts trying to find me. She found the number for my brother's office, who is an attorney, and she went off on him. He told her if she contacts him or myself again, he'll file for a restraining order and hung up on her. One of her friends texted me and said what I did to her was cruel. I told her I was ready to marry her and wanted to spend the rest of my life with her, and she was having sex with some guy behind my back for over six months, as far as I can tell. What I did might have been cruel, but it isn't as cruel as what she did to me. A buddy of mine and his girlfriend said they saw her at a bar getting wasted and breaking down until she got bounced. I don't take pleasure in it. I just want her to stay gone. I met my soulmate while I was shopping for my wedding. So honestly, this happened over four years ago, but I've never told anyone until now. A few years ago, I was engaged to someone I thought I'd be spending the rest of my life with. Let's call him Marcus. We had been together for over a year in a very serious relationship, and both of us knew we wanted to get married. It wasn't really a surprise when he popped the question, and of course, I said yes. Thus began a long road of wedding planning, and I got to work right away. Immediately I went out, started buying flowers, decorations, and picking a dress. All the typical things. I asked Marcus to help plan or give his opinion, but he just kept insisting, it's a woman's job to plan a wedding, so I did. The day came when I finally decided to pick out what my fiancé and his groomsmen would be wearing, and I made the trip to our local men's warehouse to look at their selection of suits. When I got there, I was greeted by one of the most handsome men I'd ever seen. Well, not conventionally handsome. He was tall and so thin it was shocking, in a striped suit with large glasses and a mustache that he had curled at the tips. It might seem shallow to mention his looks, but he literally was my type that people had teased me about my entire life. My family are all farmers and had always made fun of me for liking nerds. He quickly introduced himself as Sterling and asked if he could be of any assistance, so I told him all about my wedding, and he showed me what the store had to offer. He confidently told me that he'd helped with hundreds of weddings and fitted thousands of suits, and true to his word, he helped me pick the perfect ensemble. We chatted a bit about the theme I wanted, colors, etc. It turns out, we both loved vintage style and had a lot of similar interests. I left the store that day very pleased to have gotten the perfect suits ordered and called my fiancé to tell him the good news. Fast forward a few months, and somewhere in the midst of all the planning, Marcus had been acting strange. He had been arguing with me non-stop over everything, getting upset when I wanted to spend time with my family, going through my phone when I slept, and on one occasion, he even refused to give me my own car keys so that I could go home. It wasn't long before I found out that he was cheating on me with one of my friends. They had been texting back and forth for a few weeks and had already met up. 
I was utterly devastated and thankfully had the mind to break things off for good. Losing Marcus hurt, but being betrayed by my friend felt like a gut punch. A few more months went by and the loneliness and anger had definitely set in. Wanting someone to talk to, I decided, hey, what the heck, and downloaded Tinder on a whim. I had literally only been using the app for about an hour when a familiar face popped up. Yep. Sterling. I will literally never forget reading Oxford Dictionary in the Streets, Urban Dictionary in the Sheets, on his profile. Corny? Yes. Did I laugh, though? Also, yes. I swiped right, and to my surprise, he had done the same. From there, we exchanged numbers, spent nearly six hours talking on the phone that night, and met up just a few short days later. Sterling was definitely surprised when I told him what happened with Marcus, but he was incredibly sympathetic and respectful. We hit it off right away, and when I was ready, we started dating. We've been inseparable ever since and are now married with our three-month-old baby girl laying next to me as I type this. I'm happier than I ever imagined possible. And although our story is a little different, I believe I've truly found my soulmate. My wedding is in a month and I'm breaking it off. I know it sounds impulsive and I suppose it is, but there's a good reason behind it. My, 23F, husband-to-be, we'll call him liar, 36NM, is no longer the man I thought I was marrying, and I'm honestly not sure if he ever was. We met through my brother, 26M, who set us up on a blind date two years ago. My brother met him at work, and apparently they just clicked. He thought Liar and I would be a perfect match. The date went well, and Liar thought it'd be a good idea to go on one again. While on the second date, I thought it'd be a good idea to make a few things clear, in case this would lead to a long-term relationship, which it did. I explained that I wasn't interested in being with a religious person, someone who wanted children, etc. Basically anything that could cause problems in the future. One thing I mentioned in particular was that if I wasn't his type, he should be forward about it because I wasn't interested in changing anything permanently. I'd also like to add that we discussed medical problems because I am on medication for a psychological disorder that causes drastic weight fluctuations. He agreed with all my views, even saying that I was exactly his type. He said he didn't mind the weight fluctuations either because they didn't change my appearance too much, which is true. Well, we've been engaged for six months now, and last week, Liar sat me down and told me not to freak out. I listened. He explained that he wasn't entirely honest with me, saying that he was a Christian and wanted children. He then continued by saying that he thought I would have changed my mind about these things, but that ultimately we could work through it together in counseling after the wedding. That wasn't where I freaked out because I wasn't given the chance to. He didn't stop at the stuff mentioned beforehand. He gave me the following list of things he didn't like about me and thought I'd have to change. I'd have to go off the medication because he didn't like that sometimes I'd be easy to pick up and other times not so much. Apparently, this was embarrassing in front of friends. I'd have to start wearing makeup. I have a skin condition that doesn't allow for it. Dye my hair brown and get it chemically straightened every few weeks. He didn't like the curls and was even willing to pay for it, yay. Get a boob job, and more things of the like. I stayed quiet and said that he'd have to give me a moment. I've been staying at my friend's place for the past week. Liar doesn't know. But he did get my parents, who I haven't spoken to since I was 14, to call me. Apparently he's had contact with them the entire relationship, knowing full well what they put me through. I honestly just don't know what to do anymore. I'm leaving but I'm not sure how to tell him.